all right guys so welcome to today's video and in today's video we will continue our work in our one piece game right here and especially on this bandit we are working on currently yeah okay so um our last episode we have you know just set up this whole bandit so we have welded some clothing onto him we have um made him made him run okay so basically when you or basically when he's running he actually is playing some kind of running animation you know so we have already done that now in today's video we will you know just make him run towards an enemy automatically so that's going to be the topic for today's video guys okay so the first thing which we have to do is that we have to set some kind of loop okay and some experienced scripters right here might hate me now for doing this, so I'm gonna use a wild true deal loop, guys. So if you have any better alternatives to this one, then go ahead, comment so. Um I love to see criticism, okay? If it is actually criticism, so if I'm able to learn something out of it. So we are going to use this loop so that you know this bandit right here does not end its its um it's, it's it's intelligence let's say so this bandit just moves on okay so after chasing one enemy it actually chase, ch chases another one and it actually keeps looking for enemies okay so if we would not put this inside of some kind of loop structure then the enemy would possibly do nothing so that's the whole point of putting him inside of a loop now what we need to do is that um we should set up a function function find and may no and a me yeah so what this function is going to do so it is basically going to loop through the workspace okay so even through, through every descendant within the workspace so not only those instances but also the instances inside of those instances and the instances inside of those instances which are inside of those instances you know so those and even those inside okay so basically it it um it refers to everything now we are going to check if the instance which we are currently at is a humanoid because if that's the case then we are going to return Um, yeah, then we are going to return uh, the parent. Otherwise, we are going to return no. Okay, now, repeat, wait. Now, some people might hate me for this one as well. So, um, I have basically two loop structures inside of each other, which is awful, guys. But, as I've said, if you have any better alternatives, then go ahead. So, um, we have this loop right here, which does not end, right? And we have this repeat till. So, we are basically waiting till we find an enemy. Or we could even leave this out. We can just do it this way. So, if there is, if find enemy does not return nil, then, yeah, wait, then, then, we, ha then we actually have a problem. So we should only call this once and just check if this one is not nil. Because if that's the case, then we are going to, you know, um, just work with this one. Wait, so find enemy. If there is a humanoid inside of that instance and <clears throat> if that parent... Find first child humanoid root part. Okay, wait, so I'm I'm just gonna write this down and then I'm gonna explain it to you.
Okay. So this is going to be the first thing right here. Okay. So Bandit has found Bandit. Yeah, there we go. So he's actually able to recognize me. So let me just quickly explain you what I've done. So we have set up this function and we are looping through this whole this workspace and we are basically checking if any instance inside of here has a humanoid. Because if that's the case, then um, we could assure that um, when there is a humanoid, you actually have some, you have found some kind of character model. OK, so if we take a look at this structure, we have a character model which contains a humanoid and which contains some other body parts along that way we also have the humanoid root part right here so we can see that the humanoid root part and the humanoid um lead to the conclusion that there has to be a character model and that those parts right here are components of a character model so if we if we have found a humanoid then we have found a potential enemy and to verify whether this potential enemy can actually be a, can actually be an enemy we are performing this check right here and what this check does is that basically sub sub subtracts our humanoid root part's position from the uh humanoid root part no from the enemy's humanoid root part's position and it, it applies this magnitude right here so we are just basically checking distances at this point and 10 studs seems to be um the limit okay so we have a limit of 10 studs for the distance you can of course increase this if you want to we can just leave it as it is it is up to you and the third condition right here is that the instance or the potential enemy which we have found right here is not the bandit itself okay so if those three requirements are met then we are returning this potential enemy and down here we are calling this function till we have found a potential enemy so if all of those three requirements right here are, are true then we are returning something and if not then it is going to skip everything and it will just return nil okay and this return nil case is not defined down here so only the case um when something has been returned is defined right here okay and if we have found something then we actually want to move to that to that um enemy at this point so what we have to do is that we have to make use of um a certain function let me just quickly look it up okay so there is this um function called move to so what you basically need to do is that you have to refer to our humanoid to our bandits humanoid and then apply this move to and um yeah so we need wait just take a look at this okay so we basically need either the position okay so we we'll need the position so what you have to do is that you just write found humanoid root part position and then the dummy or the bandit will start to follow the enemy yeah, as you can see he tries to run towards me so there's still a, a huge issue with this whole thing let me quickly explain you why so if we would keep this print right here then we would actually see how many times this bandit has detected us as an enemy and if we logically think about it then the best way is that the bandit recognizes us once and then just you know just um, walks towards us but what happens in this case is that we actually approach him and he recognizes us so many times means there there yeah there lacks some kind of limitation so we need to have some kind of variable which actually tells that we have found an enemy and therefore should not start to chase other enemies so found enemy false now if we have found an enemy and found enemy is false so 
then we can burn found enemy to true means that we have found an enemy therefore this check will fail therefore um, our problem right here will vanish and let me show you why this is important so okay as you can see this will happen um, because we have not finished the script yet but wait let me just quickly see what happens so okay now yeah, same thing happens once again so the problem is that we have this spam movement and this spam movement makes the bandit look laggy and this is because we are actually spamming this this part of the code right here okay so this code right here is actually being spammed that's the reason why this happens but if we do so if we stop doing it that way then we'll have this kind of movement okay so this bandit right here is not able to follow us that quickly that's that's a problem as well and our job now is to find the perfect yeah the perfect uh, time at this point maybe 0.25 maybe 0.1 so you'll just yeah you just have to experiment around you can also increase the distance if you want to but um yeah so that's the way and how you make this bandit follow you we could sprint a little to you know get him off and yeah so guys <laughs> um we have actually done nothing in this video i was i was too busy to explain the idea behind of all of this okay and it is already midnight i feel pretty tired but i just wanted to create this quick video for you so i hope that you have understood the idea behind of this move too okay in the next episode we will create some kind of actions which this bandit will do so for example when the bandit has reached um some some yeah or a certain distance then he'll just start attacking you okay so that's going to be the topic for the next video and after that we're done with the bandit system and then we can hopefully start with the devil fruits guys all right with that being said thank you guys for watching leave a like subscribe share this with all of your friends leave me feedback in the comment section guys take care and see you in the next video